What's happening? Dave here with Bend Teardrop. Snow camping once again, 2022. Getting weird with the kids and some friends out here in the mountains. And uh, just gonna kind of make this video to explain some of the heat options for teardrops and all the different things we've tried and uh, what we found has worked the best. Check it out. We pretty much tried every way of heating these trailers from these candle heaters that people have recommended to inverters with electric heat to the little buddies. Um, over here, we got a little buddy. In our rental here, we've got this little buddy heater and it works pretty good in a pinch. Good for a day or two. Um, if you notice, we've got ours pointed towards the roof vent. Just gets an indoor safe heater, quote unquote. But we're a little scared of it um, just because it's burning propane in indoors. So we basically recommend that people just run it at night before you're about to go to bed or in the morning when you wake up and it's pointed towards the roof vent and just use the vent when you're running it just to be safe. And out of extra paranoia, we also put in um, a little carbon monoxide detector just in case. Um, but the take on the little buddy is it works great for a day or two. The only problem with the little buddy is it creates moisture. So you're heating your space, but you're also bringing moisture in. And when you're snow camping, condensation is kind of inevitable and that tends to make it worse. So it's kind of a good survival thing, a quick heat up deal, but not a long-term solution in my opinion. The next thing we tried is a little electric space heater uh, with an inverter. So this is an inverter hooked up to the battery in the back. Uh, we have a lithium battery, it's 80 amps, so it's got a lot more charge than your standard battery. Um, and this works in a pinch. You can get some heat coming out of there. I would recommend something around 200 watts. You don't want any more of that, or it's just gonna kill your battery. And you see it's got a little thermostat on there as so we set it to 82, and it's it's blowing some nice, nice heat right here. The only problem with it is it's drawing from the battery. And it's only gonna last, you know, two, three, four hours at the most before it starts to drain your battery down. So not good for, yeah, one night, kind of like the little buddy. The advantage of this over the little buddy is it's a dry heat. So it's gonna dry out the camper while it heats as opposed to the little buddy that's gonna create moisture. So that's a big plus. The downside is it's gonna go ahead and drain your battery. We've also tried these little candle heaters. And the idea behind this is you put some, pop some candles in there and the radiant heat comes through and it, it works kind of um, one star, I would say. It's not, not a great option. Another thing we've tried is these little dashboard heaters. The idea behind that is you're just plugging straight into 12 volts so you're not inverting. Um, and you know, they do put out some heat blowing a little heat right now it's got a little switch on the back but honestly to heat a whole camper pretty minimal might be good if like you're freezing cold just to warm up your hands but to heat up your whole camper um, not ideal the other thing about it is they draw even though it's 12 volts, it's drawing a lot of juice if you look right here 14 volts as soon as you pop this little guy in already sucking down a ton of juice so not ideal one star dashboard heater so after all those options we tried a diesel heater we put it right back here in the little cubby area uh, the diesel heater definitely put out some heat no doubt problem with it though is it created a ton of black nasty diesel smoke and it was kind of uh kind of horrible so after trying out the diesel heater i decided just to break down and get myself a propex and the reason it's all slanted in is in there is because that's how we had the diesel heater positioned ideally we did this more square so not ideal in the placement but uh this thing is i would say the most recommended solution it's not cheap uh for us to put one in it's about 2000 with all the parts and install but as you can see it's plumbed into pushing forced air into the camper. And then the main thing about it over the little buddy is it exhausts out. So down here, you've got an exhaust pipe 
that's blowing the moist air out the back. And unlike the diesel heater, it's not blowing out black, stinky smoke, it's blowing out clean propane smoke. But all the moisture is getting blown out the back. It's sucking in fresh air right here. And then just blowing in dry, forced air into in the interior of the camper. And what's pretty cool about it is we've got a little digital thermostat, like your house. So you set the temp. Oh, I want it 74. It's gonna fire up. It's gonna blow dry, hot air in. We've got it vented to come through down here. You can see the little port. That's where it's blowing in from. And it's blowing in toasty, dry, hot air. So we're, it's gonna be about 12 degrees tonight out here where we're camping. And we're gonna try it out and probably be in here in uh, shorts and t-shirts. So we'll let you know how it goes. I'll make a robin too, guys. Oh, yeah, okay. You're gonna go that way, huh? I get that. We summon the power of the flame. Ooga, 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 ooga. Buddy nice in action. Warm. You guys nice and warm in here? Putting off some heat. Hey, Dad, open it. Open it. it. It's open. Close it. Oh, you're so blown. Cold, cold air. <laughs> <laughs> Little buddy doing the job in a pinch. <laughs>